Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the beginning of a brand new high definition adventure in the world of Guild Wars 2. I finally have a good little spark in my head for how I want to do this character. I was putting it off because this is season two. This is a whole new series. I want to kick things off, right? And if you're new to Guild Wars 2, and this is a called A Noob Plays Guild Wars 2, so naturally that would attract some noobs. I know we've read it a million times, but Silvari. Silvari are not born. They awaken beneath the pale tree with knowledge gleamed in their pre-life dream. These noble beings travel seeking adventure and pursuing quests. They struggle to balance curiosity with duty, eagerness with chivalry, and warfare with honor. Magic and mystery entwine to shape the future of this race that has so recently appeared only 25 years old. Now that's a fun way. That's a noob-friendly race to get into, isn't it? Okay. Silvari. And we are going to be very male. <laughs> okay, and Necromancer. You've seen the thumbnail. You know we're picking Necromancer. Okay, next. Alright, now, when it comes right down to it, I think that for a Silvari, given that I'm used to playing a Norn, it will be less of a culture shock for me to go full height. If you want to see all my experiences up until this point, I have a playlist for the free-to-play stuff, and I have a playlist for Season 1 of me messing around with my Char Revenant and my Norn Ranger, trying out those classes, but inevitably, like every fantasy game I've played throughout my life, I will always, always, always... Let's toggle lighting, and let's also hide armor... I will always, always, always come back to the Necromancer. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so more of a bulky thing. What I... Uh, oh, da, 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 da. So the first thing I want to do for this character, the first thing, is the mushroom. The mushroom is going to be our guide. The mushroom is going to be our guide for all of this. How we want the character to look, how we want their face to look, their eyes to look, everything is going to be the mushroom. Now, when I first did this in my free-to-play, if those of you who watched my free-to-play experience, then you know my original Silvari was based off of a reference to Skyrim that he had Blackreach. In this one, I want to do a reference to the dreamlands of unknown Kadath. And that's sort of a Lovecraft thing. And what I want to do is have one that looked like he could be a part of that world. And that is a little bit difficult. But I think with this most alien face... Mm, oh, it's a tie, actually. It really is a tie. See, I got this one, which is more human. Oh, okay, so I got this one, which is more human, but I also have this... I, no, we're going with the most alien face. We really are. We're going with the most alien face. And we're going with the mushroom head. That's big. That's huge. Okay, so what we want to do... Actually, I'm kind of liking the way the green and red plays off, but I really have to think as we're going through this... Let's go back to body features. As we're going through this, we have skin pattern. What looks the most like it belongs to the dreamlands of Unknown Kadath? And of course, you know why we're doing that. Literally, they live in a pre-life dream. It's the most perfect reference to make. Okay, so glow color in our case, we could do... All right, so we have various different glow colors. Let's... Go for different body patterns. Hmm. Okay, so pattern color. All right, so we can alter that as well. All right, so I do think I want to go for something green and red, perhaps. But then again, we're also playing a necromancer. No, that would actually work. Green and red would work. Let's go to eyes. Let's go to eyes before anything else. Let's go to eyes. Red, often in Western art, tends to represent uh, passion. So we want face and skin color, hair color. We want... Well, actually, hair hairstyle, hair color. Uh, let's go with... How red? Scarlet. Scarlet might be good. Okay. Then let's go to body features, and let's go to skin pattern. Can we go... Okay, salmon? Mm, salmon. Mm, okay. Burgundy red. Is, is scarlet still... Okay. We can go red. Okay, red, red. We're looking red. I like the look of blood and veins coming off of a somewhat eldritch green body that also blends well with nature. I'm liking that quite a bit. I'm liking that quite a bit. Okay, okay. Uh, now, of course, uh, my philosophy when it comes to color patterns is that I really like to keep things as simple as possible. And you can see that there's some yellow here being added. Now, we don't have yellow as a skin color choice, uh, or rather... We don't have... What's the word? We don't, we don't have yellow as our chosen skin color, it seems. But we do have it as... Oh, banana. Oh, no, banana. Oh, no, banana. Oh, no, 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 banana. 
Okay, no thank you, Banana. No thank you. Though, I will say, if you wanted to do a good Mesmer reference to Hastor by Ro uh, R Robert W. Chambers, that, that would be a good one. That would be a good one. The, the King in Yellow. But Forest Green? Okay, let's go. We got some green going. We got some green going. Is there a much darker green? Is there a green that's closer to, say, uh, like a blacker green? A blacker green or darker green? Uh, I believe we can... Dusky green. We go dusky green. Because uh, I'm thinking of ve Midnight Sea. Okay, Midnight Sea. Uh, midnight Sky. Uh, mm, okay, so we'll birch. Oh, birch. Okay. No, no, no. I think Midnight Sky works. You can still see a bit of blue-green in there. Maybe Midnight Sea. Midnight Sea. Okay, Midnight Sea will work. That'll be our green. Then let's go all the way back to skin pattern. Okay, we can have a lot of red coming off of us. I kind of like this, a bleeding wood color. I very much enjoy that, but you also have to look at his face, and it exudes a kind of friendly calm despite an alien demeanor. So he's largely indifferent. I think the concept of having the blood come down, which is definitely the meta narrative subconsciously presented, uh, or rather that that's what resonates with, is not the best for this. But here, we see that the arms and legs are drenched in this kind of metaphorical or symbolic blood. And I like that more, because it leaves the torso uh, sort of clean, and as we go up to the eyes, we see this glowing alien presence, and that's this idea that perhaps as this alien being is, especially when you consider they have a mushroom for a head, perhaps it is the case, and let's, let's toggle light back on, light off, light back on, light off, that's great. Uh, but perhaps what that means is that it, you know, it gives off this kind of almost Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy uh, uh, kind of mentality where perhaps each of their limbs also has a brain in it. And I like the idea of someone intuitively picking up on that or a warrior intuitively picking up on that, encountering us in the world. I like that concept. Okay. Uh, physique. All right. All right. We got that. We got that. We got that. Face details. Okay. Eye color. All right. So we have golden eyes. Uh, but what do we want to do? I'm thinking we want red eyes, obviously, because we are a little bit more uh, malevolent in this game. I understand how necromancers work in this universe. They're largely morally neutral entities. Uh, if not morally positive entities, as they're a bit like doctors, they work with uh, decomposed material, not necessarily utilizing soul. So it's not like a true abominable resurrection, but they do have some very gothic, often... Uh, you know, ugly on the surface level concoctions or summons that often put people off of them. I, I want to keep the initial face, but if it is at all possible, let's see here. Is there a way to do nose length? Okay, nose length. Because we already have a face that very much is representative of bark. It's very representative of nature, balance, and we actually kind of want... I want to accentuate that as much as possible. Uh, mouth. Can we go chin length? Is there a chin length. Chin length. Okay, good. You can see that comes out. It's much sharper here. Creates a little bit of a natural, organic, almost pincer-like shape, which is very good, and it's very good for a kind of otherworldly necromancer. Uh, and actually, when it comes to eyes, it's hard for me because of the mushroom. I can't see my eyes. Gotta go to head options again. Okay. Let me, okay, so we just have to wait for him to, wait for him to go up. All right. Uh, let's give him bigger eyes. Let's get open, more open eyes. All right, yes, we want him to be almost uh, somewhat innocent, but then let's uh, eyelid shape. Eyelid shape, what? Okay, well, I, I, oh, iris size, okay. Yes, okay, yes, big old anime eyes, absolutely. Accentuate the humanity of the character by invoking the mammalian shared sense of cuteness. Basically, a little nose, big eyes, small body, that's what people, like basically the Asora incarnate, right? That's basically what, hum whoa. I forgot that they get. I forgot that necromancers get the cool skull face paint. But anyway, let's move on to character creation. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. I think we can leave the cultural armors alone because the die system is very friendly for you to re-die armor later. Um, I I think this character was almost made to better represent the uh, the class that he is doing in general. But I guess we will make. I would argue one simple change, and that is that this very stylish black, which I'm not denying would look far better than the, the autumn that we're going to change it to, uh, is what we're going to do. And we're just going to be a nice, we're just, we're just going to be a nice Italian flag. <laughs> uh, that's what we're going to be. Uh, yeah, autumn. Change the black to autumn. 
That's what we're going to do. Ooh, red boots. No, 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 no. In, in your case, okay, yeah, green. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I, I don't know why, but red boots rub me the wrong way. But no, almost Christmas themed. But uh, but yes, this is this is what our character will start off. Very loud, uh, and then maybe I would change it to a darker green. There doesn't appear to be a darker green as a general option. Um, <laughs> you know what? I, I always say that I'm going to leave it alone, but let's actually change the green to the original ebony thought, and then we'll have... <laughs> it's just a simple change, nothing too drastic, but yeah, I think that makes all the difference, don't you? We have our scary necromancer boy here. Very scary necromancer boy. Let's move on. I think we've done all we need to do here. This is beautiful. This is some good stuff here. Okay. All right. A necromancer's closest companion is death. In acknowledgement of this, I mark my face with the symbol of... And then we have the option of the skull. I respect the traditions of necromancers that have gone before me. I mark my face with the symbol of a skull to remind me that even the greatest die eventually. Now, this isn't really lore-friendly for us as we've spent our entire existence in the pre-life dream. And I was looking for something more Jungian. When I first encountered this race, I, I called them the most Jungian thing to ever Jungian. They come out of a pre-life dream and almost everything about them is a, a kind of psychoanalytical metaphor. And I'm, mis I'm horribly abusing the term psychoanalytical, by the way. But it's a psychoanalytical metaphor for everything, for just the life cycle for humanity. But anyway, we have... Oh, look at Ghostly Wraith. Look at what that does to his... Oh, that alters the whole meta-narrative of the whole damn concept for me. He goes... So, pure white eyes. So, white generally represents purity in traditional Western art. And what we have here is we go from red for passion to white for purity, which could be a totally different change. But anyway... The ghostly wraith, a wraith creature of energy and its cunning, helps it elude its enemies. Uh, what you cannot see can kill you. Oh, what you cannot see can kill you. Okay. Well, a gun again, maybe a good one, but let's go with let's see what Trickster Demon has to offer. I feel like this would be the most complimentary to us because it is, of course, naturally red. All right. Um, we can see it changes our eye color a little bit here to a more yellowish, and that's uh, I don't know how I feel about that, but. Uh, trickster demons from the mist find ways to enter our world to tear it apart. I, too, am a destructive force, and, uh, and all shall fear me. So we're very intimidating if we go with the trickster demon. But I often myself have said several times that I often identify with the archetype of the trickster in many pantheons, the Hermes, the Loki, if you will. So I think that I would like to go with the trickster. I think that would help me get into this character better. Um, absolutely, when it comes to the Silvari, absolutely. So, trouble may follow me, but I use what to overcome it? In this case, it would be ferocity. We're already... So, when we come out of the proverbial womb, so to speak, the tree womb, so to speak, uh, we are already a natural necromancer. We are a natural savant with necromancy. Uh, I definitely want to get a scepter for this character. But we're also a natural gangster. I feel like that goes with the more muscular body type we've chosen, at least in reference to Silvari more muscular. He is, I would say, naturally more aggressive. So, trouble may follow me, but I use my ferocity. Ferocity, my fer I am ferocious. Threatening violence uh, uh, gets me further than anything else. I'm a natural. Though I do try to use my powers of intimidation for good. So yes, absolutely, he is a natural gangster. I would say that this is the type of character who might feel serious guilt about intimidating people. I think one of the things about him, due to his occupation, due to his disposition, this is one of those people who very naturally is going to be seen as a villain despite them really just having a somewhat neutral to good morality, just an average Joe, but scarier than most. And it's just due to the, the nature of his profession and his natural talents. I dreamed of a quest that calls me to action. It was a vision of, and we have the option of, a green knight. I saw a powerful knight in green armor, his face obscured, he was defeated, but did not submit, was killed, but did not die. Dare I face him in battle? That might be an interesting one. We have a white stag. The, actually, the white stag, by the way, was the original name of this channel because I actually had a Skyrim Let's Play planned where I was going to do a role play of a wizard mafia and each one was going to belong to a lodge, which I literally made with a mod called Empire Builder in that game called the white stag. Anyway, the white stag is a creature of enchantment. An immortal beast with great power. If you kill him, you get to summon Hersene. It is said. <laughs> it is said that the stag will trade a magical boon for its freedom if I can catch it. Okay, and then we have 
the shield of the moon. The moon is a powerful symbol of healing and magic. Any whom dream, any who dream they're protected by the moon shall know faith and fortitude. I hope I'm worthy of such a vision. I think one of the natural things about this character when it comes to the idea of dream and the subconscious in terms of what he wishes he could do in life, if we're talking about someone who's a naturally aggressive trickster, which is sort of the character as it's evolving throughout our character creation process, then a hidden desire, a taboo goal for him, might be true freedom. The idea that he is no longer constrained by how other people view him. The idea that he could actually aspire to a moral good free of the judgments of others, which due to his general disposition and occupation, he cannot usually get. So, the white stag is a creature of enchantment, an immortal beast with great power, it is said the stag will trade a magical boon for its freedom if I can catch it. In this, the dream metaphor is he is the white stag. If he could release himself from the perceptions of others and stop caring what others think of him, maybe he'd have a better time in life. And maybe he wouldn't be so unreasonably aggressive, who knows. I believe that the most important of Ventari's teachings... I actually know who Ventari is, by the way, because I've been playing as a Revenant, and I've been running around with Ventari. Ventari, I will say, my favorite of the ghosts the Revenant can talk to. I believe that the most important of Ventari's teachings is... Okay, so we act with wisdom, but act is, uh, is one thing to know. It's one thing to know what is right, and another to change the world. We all have a calling. I will distinguish myself through my actions, and thereby lift Tyria to a higher state of nobility. Very interesting, a noble goal. All things have a right to grow. The blossom is brother to the weed. Diversity of opinion is good. Discussion is healthy. No one should be condemned simply for being different. I will stand up for the rights of all. Okay? Where life goes, so too should you. The world is a delicious and gorgeous place created for us to explore, enjoy, and protect. I will seek out the lessons in every experience, and as I, uh, and as I grow, I will have more to offer. I definitely think we want to go with all things have a right to grow. This character would be very much an anti-authoritarian type. He would be very much the rebel. The blossom is brother to the weed, my friend. Diversity of opinion is good, my friend. Discussion is healthy. No one should be condemned simply for being different. This also goes into the kind of the almost mafioso-like personality, the naturally aggressive trickster, a gangster, if you will. A gangster necromancer a little bit. A little bit of a gangster necromancer here. Gangsta, not gangsta, gangster with a hard R. I will stand up for the rights of all with a hard R. The Pale Tree awakened me during the... Okay, so now we have the cycle of noon, the cycle of dawn, the cycle of... Da, 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 and all the cycles. Cycle of dawn. Silvari awakened at, uh, at dawn are natural talkers, diplomats, and forward thinkers. We are in intimately connected with our surroundings and markedly empathetic toward all, even other races. I think that empathy could be turned into aggression, so cycle of dawn might be a good one. Cycle of Noon. Silvari awakened midday solve problems by attacking them head on. We are the warriors, hunters, and travelers who experience life firsthand and enjoy the rush of taking risks in order to feel truly alive. All right, all right, that might also be a good one. That might also be a good one. It's, it's like dawn, but a bit more aggressive. So that's good. That's good. Straightforward. We might go noon cycle of dusk. Silvari awakened at dusk are naturally curious and thoughtful. We love to learn and spend more uh, spend time reading and studying. We are intelligent and drawn toward the luscious complexities of magic. Okay, now dusk sounds like a better option. Cycle of night. Silvari awakened at night are secretive and cautious with inf information we make our own decisions, and we come and go as we please, nimble of mind and body. If it wasn't for the fact that he's, he is somewhat empathetic, he does uh, occasionally uh, go off on his own, but I would say this guy latches onto other people pretty well and becomes kind of a protective, almost fatherly, like kind of a godfather-like figure to them. So I think we might go with the cycle of dusk. You know, but naturally interested in magic, but he's more of a savant with magic. I don't know, I think we might go with the cycle of dawn. But then again, the cycle of noon is, is like the cycle of dawn, but more aggressive. Silvari so awakened at midday, solve problems by attacking them head on. We are the warriors, hunters, and travelers who experience life firsthand and enjoy the rush of taking risks in order to feel truly alive. He does have that instinct in him, and that compulsion is probably what's going to ruin his life socially over time if he can't get those flaws in check. So we're going to go with the cycle of noon. 
Though trouble may follow me, I overcome it with ferocity. The Pale Tree awakened me during the cycle of noon. And the most important of Ventari's teachings is all things have a right to grow. While still in my dream, I dreamed of the White Stag, and I'm called to find it. A necromancer's closest companion is death. In acknowledgement of this, I mark my face with the symbol of a trickster demon. This is my story signed. And we said it's going to be a reference to the uh, dreamlands of unknown Kadath. And so we are going to name our character Kor. Kordath. So like Coral, but Kadath. So Kordath. Kordath. We are Koda Kordath, the necromancer. Kordath. This is, it looks like a Kordath, right? His, his name is Kordath. He's a Kordath. How you doing, Kordath? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, Kordath. I am Silvari. Yeah, you are. Twenty-five years ago, my people first appeared in Tyria. The pale tree flowered, and the firstborn awakened. The dream contains my race's memories. We gain awareness here, and then awaken into the world. The dream fills me with knowledge, and is my connection to others. It is my inspiration, my guiding light. While here, I have discovered my purpose. To face evil and destroy it. Even now, I sense my destiny calling me to awaken. My time is soon. Nature and goodness are under siege. All life hangs in the balance. If Tyria is to survive, it will need us. If we fail, the dream will be consumed by nightmare, and Tyria will wither and die. I dream of voyages. The voices of my people whisper to me of far-off places and mysterious shores. A white stag races before me. Brave and wild, it offers me the gift of freedom. The dream hints at my future. There are distant lands and dangerous challenges, but also I see my home, a grove with a white tree, and friends who will stand by me when I need them. My honor dictates that I help those who are lost and alone. I am the protector. I hear my name in the wind, and I feel the call of my future. And yet I sense darkness approaching. Something intrudes upon the dream. Blocks the path to my awakening. Before I can enter the world, I must first face this evil and vanquish it. I am summoned by the dream. This is my story. I love you, Tree Tony Soprano. Fighting the Nightmare. You better believe we're going to be fighting the Nightmare. Oh, also, something really interesting um, uh, that I just want to mention. Can I be? Oh, I can be all night. All right. Um, something I really do want to mention, though, is that uh, my family recently got 5G internet. So, um, so yeah. The, the internet connection problems we've been having, uh, that's not a problem. That's because we were running on 3G. And now we're 5G, baby. We're a 5G baby. Uh, I just want to run around and explore the dream first, because it doesn't seem like we're ever going to come back here. So this serious starting area is just going to be where we, uh, where we run around a bit first. Uh, I'm also going to test the recording volume levels to see if we get any kind of echo in the background. I don't think we will, uh, but we're going to do that. I did not know that such a small seed could begin such a very large journey. This is amazing. Okay. All right. We are going to check out here. We are going to uh, do... Uh, yeah, I know. I know what to do. I know what to do. I've been running around like a stupid brain. Okay, yeah, but we definitely want a scepter. I like how the scepters play. They're the closest thing to wands. And I think it's because I watched Harry Potter as a kid. But I, I, I've just been always bothered, whether it's Skyrim, any, any universe... I just want the wizards to have the opportunity to have wands. They can serve different purposes, but I like the wands. So we're gonna do scepter. I like scepter. It's it's like that's like a it's like a wand. It's like a half staff. It's good. All right, that's what we're gonna do. All right, all right, all right. Let's begin. Let's begin. Let's begin. I know, I know. The video was much shorter than what you're used to from me. 
my videos, especially on Guild Wars 2 or anything with Jeremy Soul music in the background, tends to go on for about an hour or two. There have been some things coming up in my personal life which caused me to keep this one shorter, but this is an introduction to our character. I hope you enjoyed this first episode. It's literally just us getting our character set up. We haven't even begin their, begun their story yet, and we have something to go into for episode two. So thank you very much for joining us. Come back next time for a much longer, much more action-packed episode, I promise you.